As video game fans, we want to buy games. But when we are developers, we have to spend to develop games. But what does a budget look like for an indie game developer? Today, we're going to be using sample numbers and simple numbers at the same time to demonstrate what could a budget be for a game developer in the indie game space. There's going to be a lot of math today, so watch out for this episode because we're going to be diving into numbers. So, let's talk about what an indie game dev needs to pay for or developers in the form of group. First, indie devs need to pay for a lot of things including and not limited to marketing, staff, software, and other things needed for a game to come to life. Some, exp some expenses are small while others are big. The big ones are when you have to pay at least thousands of dollars to implement. So let's let's do our sample budget. And today we're going to assume that we're going to be making an indie adventure game. And our role is to be the budget spender. So for the sake of simplicity, we're going to be using sample small numbers. But we're going to be doing it in a way that makes sense. Okay. So our starting budget for today, for this particular adventure game, is going to be $10,000. However, we decided to make a Kickstarter. And 500 days later, our Kickstarter was successful, and we made over $200,000. My plus or minus fees. So, and then, in addition to that, we decided to grab donations from outside of our crowdfunding campaign, and we made over $100,000 for a total game budget of game one for $310,000. This, this number $310,000 is going to be important in a moment. Now we're going to spend some money. So I'm going to give out some sample numbers for today. So we need story writers, programmers, concept artists, level designers, graphics, testers. So the numbers in parentheses mean... What, how, how many people are in that department? For example, how many level designers are in the level design department? And we have five people in our little sample studio. So our staff is 2, 4, 5, 10, 5, 10, 20, 5, 10, 20, 30, 32, 34 people. At least for this section. Okay, so 34 people. That's not bad. So I decided, you know what, my my story writers, each person deserves ten thousand dollars for our sample market, sample studios. Multiply by two is twenty thousand dollars. Programmers, we have a senior programmer and we have a junior programmer, but I'm gonna pay them equally to make sure that nobody gets upset, and to make this sem this math simple. 2 times 5,000 is going to be 10,000. We have 5 concept artists, so that's concept art in terms of like what you want to put into the engine, like you draw first and then you put it into the engine. We have 5 concept artists, including one senior concept artist, but we have 5 people, multiply by 2,000 and that's $10,000. We have some level designers. We have five level designers. One of them is a senior. But we have we have five of them multiplied by 1,000, and that's 5,000. Because the 1,000 is how much I'm going to pay them e e equally. Okay, now keep in mind, in an actual real-life indie developer company, these numbers are not equal. Again, I'm using these numbers as a little simple yet interesting experiment we have some graphics we have a we have two senior graphic designers we have one junior and we have all everybody else is an entry level we have 10 of them to multiply by 1000 so that's ten thousand dollars and finally we have some game testers we um we have decided for a little studio we decided, um, uh, let's just say my room, for example, is our testing studio. We have 10 computers. Um, I, will, I will observe each one to see which one or what needs to be developed more. We have 10 testers. One of them is a senior. Two of them are juniors. 
and everybody else is entry level. I give them $500 each, so 5 times 10 is, in this case, 5000 So the total for this section of the budget, if we, if we add everything in this section, so that's 30000 40, 45, 55, 60000 so we're looking at sixty thousand dollars already for section one, which is the essentials. Okay, keep this number. We're going to add this to our total expenses in a moment. Software and licensing. So when it comes to software and licensing, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the software used, like Unity, Unreal Engine, all that good stuff. We are not going to be including RPG Maker, however. Because most of the time when you think of RPG Maker, it's RPG games. And we're not going to consider that for our little adventure game. So for that reason, no RPG Maker. And because normally Unity and Unreal Engine are free, assuming that you don't get the student license and you just do this for fun, no, no profit, it's free. So $0 for license for um, software. However, music licensing. This is a little bit of a tricky situation. Are you going to make your own music or are you going to borrow music? When you borrow music, you have to license the music. You have to, you have to make sure you have permission. Sometimes artists will force you to purchase like a license in order to use their song in the game. Now, if you're making your own music, then that's up to you. So that's usually free. However, most of the time, if you are an indie game developer, you make your own music, believe it or not. So, but let's just say for one song, I'm just going to use this as an example, that you like a song by Green Day or some band, okay? Doesn't matter what band. For this sample, we're going to say we're going to borrow a song from Green Day. And we're going to say the licensing is $1,000. Keep in mind, this is just a sample number. And this is for the sake of simplicity. Assets via Marketplace. So software, like Unity, Unreal Engine, all that, like UEFN, or the Fortnite, have allow, allow you to purchase assets. So assets, uh, we're talking about like buildings. We're talking about like customized uh, art we're talking about customized this and that so assets are usually twenty dollars each but remember you're talking about an x amount of assets because you do not know how much you're going to spend on assets yet but for this sample we're going to for the high-end assets to make our game look professional so we're going to say five thousand dollars for assets via marketplace so our total for this section is six thousand because we're going to assume no, the software is not going to be is free. So right now we're spending sixty-six thousand dollar from our three hundred ten thousand dollar budget. Marketing and launching. Now this one is going to be a little bit more interesting because depending on how you're going to budget this section, this is the one that's going to be a little bit more enticing. Marketing, we're talking about Facebook, advertisements, billboards, all that good stuff. Most of the time, if you want to do that material, you have to spend big bucks. You have to spend the big bucks in order to get on the billboard, like in Los Angeles or in New York. And in New York particularly, there's this um, digital billboard in Times Square. You know how you watch the New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Sequest? You see that in the background, there's this billboard that's digital. And you have to pay the big bucks if you want to be on the digital big board. Billboard. So for this particular section, the marketing is going to be 50000 But that's a simple number. I will tell you, if you are doing triple A number, that's way more. The real number is way more than that. But for the sake of simplicity, 50,000. Platform fees. Okay. Platform fees is based on launching and other stuff. 
platform fees, you might have to pay a platform fee to get your game on the market. Like the iOS store, or the Android, or the PlayStation store, or the Xbox. I believe you have to pay at least one, 100, but for the sake of this, this experiment, 1000. Okay, so the total for this section is going to be 51,000. Okay, so as you can see, the majority of your budget, if you're an indie game developer, is in the essentials department and in the marketing department, because marketing is going to be an expensive, expensive uh, journey because you want to get your game out there in the public, especially in the indie game developer market. I will tell you, based on research, that um, indie game developers do not do not get as much attention as the triple A people, because a lot of triple A games are advertised on the billboard like in LA or in New York. So that's what you have got to think about. How am I going to get my game on there, talk about it, and market it? That's why on Facebook in particular and Twitter, you see these advertisements on the Twitter looking at Nike shoes, Adidas, you have sometimes games like Raid Shadow Legends. The reason why they do that is to, mo to promote their game. And they pay the big bucks in order to do so. So now, let's look at our receipt for our little sample game. So in section 2.1, we discovered, we talk about what we need for section 2.1, and that is the 60,000. 60,000. And for section two, we said six thousand. For section three, we said fifty-one thousand because of marketing. Now I would say zero, but because I would say zero, but for the for the platform fees, but I I don't want to say zero because even though I want an even number. The way that platform fees are, it's never free. So our receipt total, <clears throat> our receipt total is officially sixty-six thousand plus. <coughs> Excuse me. Is one hundred and seven thousand. Let me just make sure my math. So six twelve. <clears throat> 66 plus 51 is going to be 107. I, be I believe. Let me just make sure of that 107,000. For this sample, for this sample doll. But remember, this is just a sample size. I believe that's 66 plus 51. That's one. I'm gonna do a little bit of quick math here. This is after all budgeting. So 60,000 plus 51 plus 6. 117,000. Okay. So. Our leftover budget for to start game two is going to be is going to be uh let's say three hundred ten minus one seventeen thousand the three ten minus one seventeen is one hundred ninety three thousand so one hundred ninety three thousand is safely into the bank to start game two. But let's talk about now that second stage, the revenue stage, and that is the number of the price of the game. And I'm going to pull a number from v VG Insights. We're going to be using VG Insights 
for our next episode. So look out for that. But the average price of an indie game in this particular market is five five dollars. So without discounts, the the to the, uh, the retail price is going to be five dollars even. We're not going to include taxes though, for the sake of like simplicity. Let's just say that we're going to have a discount of fifty percent off. Okay, we're gonna have a discount launch week, launch week discount. Okay, and let's just say to start, our, <coughs> our launch week discount is two fifty. Okay. So now we're going to generate our revenue. Okay. Now to do this, we're going to imagine a number of units sold, which is how many sales you do, plus any donations that you receive during the, the sale. And that will be our total revenue for this particular game one. So let's just say that we sold uh two hundred thousand units. Okay. At four dollars, I mean, at five. Let's just say that we decided that there will be no discount. At no discount, that will be equal to two hundred thousand multiplied by five. That's a million dollars, I believe. I believe that's a million. Two times five is ten. Yeah, that's a million. Okay. Donations post launch. Let's just say that we got over one hundred thousand in donations. Our total revenue for this particular game is one point one million. They're not one point one million. Yeah, one point one million. So this is one point one million. So the total revenue is 1.1 million. However, we have to do some more math. So once again, the starting budget was 310,000. Our total expenses, 117,000. For our total after expenses, Total after is going to be 193,000. Now we're going to add our revenue, which is the 1.1 million. Total from donations, which is 100,000. Actually, one million here, and then one hundred thousand here. Okay, so the final total of our game with the sales is one million. It is about two two million here. That's actually two million because of the one million plus one hundred thousand is one one point one million. Plus that one hundred ninety three thousand. So that is going to be two hundred ninety three thousand. So we are talking about one million two hundred and ninety three thousand even. So that means remaining from budget is we're still we have, you have to add that. So that's good. The year final total officially is 1.1, 1 1.2 1, even. Did the game make or lose money? Obviously it made money, but, here, but here's how you can tell. Yes, the game made a lot of money, but how much money? So to tell this, we're going to do one final math equation. The final total even is 100, 
1,293,000. But we started with our, our 310,000, right? The total after expenses was 193,000. So after that, we have to take we have to take our total final total minus final total money minus total after expenses and compare compare to starting budget. So our final total minus total after expenses is going to be this one nine one hundred one two nine three three zero 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 minus our starting budget at three ten thousand is nine hundred eighty three thousand. So nine hundred eighty three thousand. And we're going to reverse that with our starting budget of 310000 And therefore, because 983000 is bigger than 310, therefore, we made all uh, we made nine hundred eighty three thousand dollars we are actually we made let me let me take that back because that's not actually true we made nine hundred eighty three thousand minus three hundred ten thousand remember your your starting budget is like your capital in a casino. So we made over six hundred and seventeen thousand. Let me just make sure that number is correct. Yeah, six hundred seventy-three thousand. Base versus the starting budget. So we made six hundred seventy-three thousand dollars on that one game because of your capital. You need to make sure you have capital, and your capital is three hundred ten. Okay, because because it's just like a casino. If you want to buy in to a game of roulette, and you buy in, it's twenty dollars, and you make thirty dollars on the casino. That thirty dollars is technically ten dollars in terms of make, because your capital or what you put in is the twenty dollars. The buy-in is your capital. Just like your starting budget for a indie game. 310,000 is your capital then anything you make after that if you do will become your profit in this case the the number the final total was 1,293,000 so 1,293,000 minus you have to subtract you have to subtract all your ex expenses and then you have to subtract that number by your starting budget Okay, so that's what you have to do to make sure you have your capital. So your cap, your official profit is six hundred ninety-seven, six hundred seventy-three thousand dollars, which is not bad compared to what would have happened. Now, obviously, if this was less than, the if it went the other way around, then you lost money. But in this case, you totally made six hundred seventy-three thousand. That's how the budget is. Okay. Now keep in mind, I'm not going to give you the show notes for this one, just because this is a sample number, and I don't want to give you wrong numbers. This is going to be based on what you actually do in the workplace of indie game development. These are just sample numbers. However, I do want to give you guys a little insight of something. I actually did some research in terms of like the real number. The average number according to according to Rocket Bush Studio, 
which I'm going to link the article in the description. The average amount of money used to spend for indie games is 250000 That's a number. That's a, an actual number. So if we take a look at that average, we, we said that our budget is going to be 310000 So this is a little bit over. But if we started with if we started the whole thing with our average number of two hundred fifty thousand, um, with the exact same expenses, we're not looking at a whole bunch of profit profit from that, okay? Because it's a lower number, and that is how the budget works. Now keep in mind, anything that I listed here could be subject to change. Because nowadays you have VR, you have AR, augmented reality. And believe it or not, you have to pay for that thing too. If your indie game is going to include any VR or any AR, you have to pay for the technology because you have to, it's like you're renting it. Because you not only have to program for the AR or the VR, but you have to make sure that you can test everything. So you have to hire even more people and that is going to dig in into your project number, into your profit margin and your budget margin. So your budget is going to change as an indie game developer based on what your game direction is. So I believe this is a good example of a sample. Okay? Next time here on the podcast, we're going to be talking about ratings and feedback. And we're going to be, it's, under, it's, our, it's our next edition of AAA versus Indies. Ratings and feedback. We're going to be talking about what types of games had the most positive ratings or reviews on VG Insights. We're also going to be talking about how fans are considered for their feedback against those fans who are doing the indie games. And our bonus question is, why are indie games not getting the spotlight? Okay, let me end. That will be answered more on next episode. Because that one requires a little bit more on the research front. So today's episode was all about math. Next episode is all about research again. So um, look out for more numbers, math graphs and articles now keep in mind that the article for today is a is optional the next time though they are going to be used okay so we're going to be taking a look at reviews feedback and all that and yes i know i know i'm going to do it again i am going to be using call of duty as an example because recently they did something they did um a little no no and we're going to talk about that for sure. That's all for today's episode. If you guys enjoyed what you saw today, hit that like, hit that share, and of course, live on the indie side of life.